Well, hello, this is Alex, and you are listening to Alien Lanes, the first one of 2020. Wow, yeah, finally made it to 2020, and I'm still alive. At least that's what my beer is reminding me. So, yeah, this show comes out to you live from beautiful Humboldt Park in Chicago, Illinois. And I feel responsible for the material that I am playing for you tonight. So I'm going to tell you what I have played so far. And right after that, we're going to go on a, a journey of sound with Joe from Deem, from Physical Medium. He's going to live PA this place while I lose my mind. So um, I played for you. At the beginning, a song from A.R. Kane. That song that I played, um, I really like a lot. It's kind of like a dream pop song. Um, and it's called Haunting. Then after, I played a song for from Seafield. Uh, that's called Undo- Industrious. It's from a record that I like a lot called Kick. And I mean, I wasn't lucky enough I was able to see Seafield last year i never thought that i would have that experience but yeah um also play some stereo lab tone burst that's the first song from their 1993 lp transient random noise burst with announcements i played for you the swirlies the 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 song two girls kissing from they spent their wild youthful days in the glittering (laughs) world of salons yeah, that's a long LP title. Came out in twenty in, in two thousand and six, and I, I really, really love it. I think it's like you know, one of my favorite American shoegaze bands. And then I played um, uh, one that sounded kind of like Spaceman Three, but in Spanish. It's from Los Planetas, from their nineteen ninety nine record, Canciones para una Orquesta Química. Uh, one of my favorite songs from the Mancha Solares. So guess what? Um, right now, we're gonna. Right now, we're gonna go live to the PA. Joe is gonna play some jams for you. I am not going to interrupt through it. So I want you to like, you know, take that whole journey. Go pick up that DMT pen. It's time to hit it.
Well, hey. Yo, wow, I'm... I feel hypnotized after that set. Yeah. This is Alex. You're listening to Alien Lanes. There's a pretty weird, cool reverb going on, but I think it's just my my headset being too close to the microphone. Possibly what makes me sound, you know, like like I am very close to you. Possibly. Ah, possibly I am. Yeah. And you're listening to Q4 Radio, live from Humboldt Park. What you just heard, it was a live PA set from Joe. Joe from Physical Medium and and Dim. And he's, he's right here next to me. Yeah. Hey, Joe, what's going on? Hey. Man, that was pretty awesome. I am... You know, I really like it when think of think of the show like like a spaceship or or a car or a, a vehicle, and most of the time I am you know here like driving it, but it feels so good when I give the, let the key to someone that I know is gonna. You know, take me everywhere in all the, the directions that I wish to go, and just simply like enjoy the ride. You're a shaman, as yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm curious to 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 ask, um, in, simply because I, I want to know know more about like physical medium. To me, the imagery that I've seen so far makes me think of something esoterical. And then after hearing what, what you what you were sharing with, with, with us and the airwaves, I just have to ask you more. Can you tell me, what is physical medium? Um, am I talking in front of the right microphone? Absolutely, am yeah. I? Okay. Sorry, that was... I just spent an hour standing. I just need a second. I can't think. I kind of need a smoke. Can I do that while you play some music? Absolutely. I'll play some smoky music. Cool. I just need totally. five minutes to sit. Yeah, down yo, again. that that's awesome. <laughs> I, I feel I, I feel like it's the perfect thing to do right now. You know, collect yourself. I'm yeah. I'm still kind of like hypnotized, yeah. like in a haze. I mean, yeah. besides the edibles and all that, <laughs> I'm like, feel pretty sunk. And it's yeah. uh, the music. But yeah, um, you know, to give, to, to, get that, to get that break, I'm going to leave people here with a song from Them Are Us 2. Hi, this is Alex. Yeah, and, and we, we took a little break, smoke break. We really needed a, a, a little... Nicotine, a little smoke to be able to to continue after uh, after those intense jams. Um, I want to let you know what I play for you um, before. I mean, du during that little break we took, that last one, it's from um, kind of like a shoegaze drone dream pop kind of band. They don't have exactly beats in their songs. Well, but they're pretty hazy, and their name is called Love Lies Crushing. They're from Chicago, and they were pretty active in in the nineties. Nineteen ninety three is the one that I the, that I played uh, uh, from them. The, the record uh, Blow White Last Wish, and um, yeah, I told all those words are written together. So I try to like you know give you. Um, I think that's the way that it sounds. The song that I play for you is Burst. And before that, I played a song from Them Are Us Too, um, which is kind of like a dream pop band that kind of sounds like the Cocteau Twins. And unfortunately, one of the guys passed on the ghost chip fire that occurred out in Oakland. So um, they're not around anymore, but, but we are. And we're going to have a, um, a, a moment here with, with Joe. Joe, do you... How do you feel? Good, good, man. Yeah, needed a second. I'm, a, I'm, I'm happy I was able to provide that second for you, like a, a, able now to like compose yourself. Yeah, get yeah. it. Do you watch The Simpsons? I love The Simpsons. Yeah, 
I love the Simpsons too. Like, there's an episode where Homer has to like roast Mr. Burns. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And someone comes out and delivers news that like a puppy was run over in the parking lot or something right before he comes up to do his comedy sketch. That's how I felt about that dude from the ghost ship, man. <laughs> like that was the last thing he said. Oh my god! No. For throwing me on, that was devastating. That's crazy. It, it's. I mean, when when it occurred, it was. A, a disaster because you you are familiar with like DIY spaces for, sure. for for you know for the the idea that the the media gave people about what was happening there versus what we all know yeah um, is is very different um, the majority of like DIY spaces I've been of course they have installations and sometimes they're you know somewhat difficult to navigate like I'll tell you like Mortville for example sure and um, when when they were talking about it on on, on on TV and the news, they talk about like there was like some like criminal intent right. after a place that you know really catered to to artists that unfortunately are priced out of the of the housing market in a place like Oakland and San Francisco. Right. So so yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to play that song and yeah. it, all ca- ca- it all came up. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult enough to live in San Francisco, let alone have a space where you can play a drum set. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, absolutely. I, um, I imagine that in order for you to like have a place like that in San Francisco, you possibly have to pay quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's impossible, you know. Um, it, it's interesting that you mentioned that because it makes me think of uh, David Byrne. It makes me th- makes me think about something he said about um, the arts being priced out of like Manhattan and, mm. and New York City yeah. in general. Sure, um, which explains all that bedroom pop that was happening <laughs> in the late nineties, early two thousand. Like absolutely, ex- yeah. Explains black dyes and growing animal collective and, all that and hip hop. You know what I mean? Like, oh, definitely. MPCs, you know, in the Bronx. You know what I mean? Just yeah, make, a, you know, doing doing what you can with what you have. You know, bedroom music, yeah. definitely. Yeah, but amplify for the world. <laughs> yeah, so. Yo, um, my, I guess you know the question that I have for you. Um, uh, you were, how can I say? Uh, for the moment, I wanted to know about physical medium. Mm-hmm. So I'm familiar with them, and and I I think that I took the executive de- uh, decision of just having them later on the show when you guys have the record out and like <laughs> give you guys you know sit you all here yeah. and, and really you know like dedicate the whole show to that I, but I can't believe how much space you have in here I've been listening to your show for a while and I always imagined this like you know a quarter of this space a closet room but like we could play in here I don't know how many people you'd want in the room but like our rehearsal space is half this size so. I would love you guys to like <laughs> play here that is that is definitely happening yeah we'll get pretty loud on the airwaves yeah. I, I I look forward to to yeah. that definitely you cool. know yeah um wh- how, how did the physical medium came came to happen what um it's hard to say because it's just it's just it is the output of stuff that I'm doing with uh, you know lifelong friends of mine brothers of mine you know um so we were doing the dim thing and that was a band um but we just sort of realized there's all this other stuff we're always doing you know we're always making things you know despite our output you know we're always working on something so um we moved uh, about a year ago year and a half ago we moved into a bit of a spooky warehouse situation not unlike the ghost ship and, okay. Um, yeah, we were in there and it essentially occupied an entire floor of a warehouse space, a block long warehouse space. And um, we were looking for a space like that for a long, long time, just a space where we had enough room to do what we needed to do and at a volume that we needed to do it at. And that's really, really difficult to do. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's sort of just there wasn't anybody else that was quite in our situation so I was desperate and all over Craigslist and eventually found this situation 
uh, that was doable enough, but it was very raw and very difficult. And I learned a lot about HVAC. And, uh, <laughs> if you remember, we had a polar vortex last winter, you know. I can so imagine trying to keep the place warm. It was very difficult. I would be out there seven days a week just making sure the heat was still on, you know, and it often wasn't, you know, and just like covering all the gear, our life's worth of accumulated gear and tarps and just praying for the best, you know. It's totally worth spending money on heating, ventilation, air conditioning, yeah. cooling. Yeah. yeah. They didn't have that kind of money, though, you know what I mean? And we didn't have that kind of money. We were just doing what we could with what we had, you know, and there was a day where the guy who was essentially running the space brought an electrician out and it was my first time sort of meeting someone else uh that wasn't directly involved at the building you know someone who was a hired professional to come out there you know and um i wanted to get a good read on this person you know like what do you actually think of the situation like is this doable you know yeah and he was an older guy you know more professional and you know you could just sort of tell he was you know going along with it but you know. and i essentially <laughs> said like we don't we don't want another ghost ship you know like that's D definitely you know like I, i think there's a lot of a lot of people that work for insurance they're looking at buildings and they stumble upon these situations like yeah. they go up to like let's say like club rectum right and they go up to like the mopery right the, and Uh, I, I don't remember that the, the reason why they couldn't continue the mopper is because the supermarket needed property insurance. So the the people, you know, like doing the adjusters, I think, I don't know the name of those guys, uh -huh. but they're like checking the premises uh -huh, to yeah. see what's going to be the, the rate for uh -huh. the insurance. And when they went up and saw all the tents at the mopper, <laughs> like we cannot do, we, can, we cannot do anything with this building like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. But so it was attached the to the supermarket? It was. Um, so it went down with it? The, well, the supermarket stayed there, but okay. because of the changing demographics of Logan Square, I, see. I believe that that supermarket, it's, it's done. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, It's pretty funny that uh, the moper, uh, when it was closed, and it will remain closed for a while, but it, yeah. it reopened, the building reopened, and that floor was a gym. And mm. I remember, you know, people used to go there to destroy their body. <laughs> so to me, it was ironic. Wow, now that people go there to, like, shape it up. Well, when I showed up here, I never knew where you did this from. I, I, I didn't quite imagine it, and it's, it's very conveniently located. But, like, I, I just, I got out and was standing in front of that fitness center next door. They've got a really nice picnic table oh. set up right in front. <laughs> and it has the address on it, you know, and I thought, what the hell, like... I had to double check and make sure I wasn't in the wrong spot. <laughs> If I could do the show from one of their stationary bikes, I would. <laughs> yeah, it's like it would be pretty. Uh, it would be pretty energetic. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know, um, Joe, I am very happy that you know I was able to get you here and and, and put you, you know, on the main seat and and, and and you know drive drive this vehicle that Alien Lanes is. You know, I uh, was wondering the source. How do you how do you like pick the source material for for this? Like, how, where does it come from? Just listening to a lot of music. Yeah, there's a really good record store in Berlin called Hard Wax that I I was fortunate enough to actually get to see uh, a few years ago, and um, the place is like a temple. You know, you have to walk up three winding small old. Uh, Berlin flat apartment, you know, complex staircase to get there. And it's just like covered in stickers in different languages from around the world. And you get to this like iron door. It's like the door to a submarine or something. You know, this is yeah. how, how it is in my memory, you know, and just you walk in and the music's loud. No one is talking, you know, and the way that they have music broken down uh, into all these genres and subgenres. Um, it's like, I know absolutely nothing about music, you know, <laughs> and they've got all the decks set up so you can grab a stack of records. And it said something hysterical, like minimum, you know, or you, you can't take more than 30 records, you know, to, to sit there and sample with 20 records or something like that. But That's pretty like, generous. I, I can't imagine sitting there with 20 records. Yeah. You'd be there all afternoon. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I am considering that. Well, actually, I don't even remember now which record stores in Chicago allow you to even play uh, some some wax before buying oh, it. Oh, gramophone. Gramophone. Gramophone is the shop. So so sweet of gramophone of doing that. I think they might be the only ones doing that. That's right such now. an important place. It's the only reason I get over to that neighborhood anymore. Um, I used to be over there all the time, and now going over there feels like a different city. But um, I, I go out of my way to go to Gramophone. It's a really, really great place. Uh, Serafini, who runs that place, is great. And uh, the staff that works there is always really helpful. And I can spend hours in that place for sure. I think, I think the, record, the record shops in town should take note of that and really have a turntable for, for peeps to, to test yeah. vinyl, you know. Like, I remember Permanent used to have that. Yeah. But of course, you could only check one at a time. Yeah, yeah. If not, Lance would like get pretty mad. Re Reckless is great. Reckless is a great record shop. Gramophone just does something different, and it's very special. Right on. And they just uh, turned fifty this year. I want to say Th this year is like their fiftieth anniversary, and they just of had, like, Reckless. Of, I, not Reckless of, of Gramophone. Gramophone. Oh wow! They, they had an all metro thing, uh, maybe November or something like that, which was kind of a big deal for them. You know. I I really need to like go up there and, and visit. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. I, I feel like even though uh, we are in a in a place where there's a lot going on, yeah. I'm like very regional. Yeah. I've always like live like give give uh, gramophone your money. You know what I mean? That place oh, yeah. has to keep going. And I, I've been worried about that place getting priced out of that neighborhood because that neighborhood has changed so much in my time. You know, um, yeah, things change so quickly year to year that. Yeah, I don't want Gramophone going anywhere. That, this that is place so is important. It, 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 this is a good plug for Gramophone. Yeah. Definitely, <laughs> you know, I I hope really like the people that listen to this show to that that go out and, and, and buy records, not just like listen, you know, to streams online or you know Spotify. Yeah. Like really, like buy, become a fetishist and get this vinyl. That's how you, you find know. stuff, you know, yeah. just spending an hour in a bin of records and you just throw it on and something either works or it doesn't. And that's that's how I do it, you know, to get back to your question, where does this stuff come from? It sometimes just comes from dropping a needle for two seconds and it's like, yes, this is what I'm bringing home, you know. And then we'll rip it and I'll, I'll get it into the computer so that I can put together these sets or whatever. But, you know, having the physical record is a special thing. Well, Joe, you know what? We are... We are to the end of the show. Cool. You know, we like. I really enjoy this this journey. You know, like I I recorded it. I recorded it too. <laughs> so I'm gonna be revisiting this, and um, I, I I I'm looking forward to have you here with Dim. Yeah. And like also, you know, like looking forward to hang out, going going to your space, jam, yeah. all hey, that. Hey, we'll be at the bottle on Sunday. Yeah. Plug that. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be loud right in your ears. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. So then, you know, this is pretty strange because we're like exactly like over, but I still want to like leave people with a sound. Yeah. A sound. So I think perhaps... I can find a sound that can sum up what had happened, and it can be like one of those that it takes a second or two seconds. And I can really like spending more time trying to find that moment. Well, Joe, it's lovely to have you here. I look forward to 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 everything that we're gonna be doing. Yeah, man. Thanks a and lot for having me. I really appreciate it. People out there, you all have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>